everybody. How are you all doing today? I promised Christy I would be on time. I still have one more minute, Christy. One minute, and then we're going to get started. I want to give everybody a chance to get on here. I am Elizabeth with Elizabeth Road Studio, and today I'm a pirate. Hi, Leona. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. We have been a pirate family many, many times, and so I thought it was apropos to dress as a pirate today. I'm a good Christian pirate, though. I'm wearing my cross, so <laughs> I'm the nice kind of pirate. <laughs> hello, Grace and Michelle. Hello, hello. I'm so glad y'all are here. Hi, Michelle from Indiana. I'm glad you're here. Hi, good morning, Connie. Okay, I'm going to show you what we're going to be making. Well, first, let me introduce myself. I'm Elizabeth Rhodes. I'm a glass and resin artist from Bowling Green, Kentucky. I also paint watercolors and acrylic painting. Um, this is what I'm talking about when I say glass and resin. This is a piece I've done. Um, go check out my website, elizabethroadstudio.com. If, um, yeah, a Christian pirate. <laughs> if you're interested in glass and resin, I have a membership group. We would love for you to join. We're over 100 people strong, and we've got about 100 tutorials in there with all kinds of information and fun stuff. And you even get a crash course in glass collage basics. So um, anyway, we're going to make a prayer board today. So let me bring up my other camera. All right. I'm so excited to show you guys this. This is similar. Oh, this is similar to one of the projects that we did in my makers group. Grace, I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Annette and Brandy. Okay. All right. Hi, Leah. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do a prayer board. We've done this in my makers group before uh, in a similar way. And I just grabbed one of these project boards from Michael's. And this one kind of had like a beadboard look, like a shiplap type groove in it. And I'm not crazy about that for this project because I'm going to be doing lettering on it. I don't want my letters to go over that part. So I flipped it over and it's still got like these little things. I'll pull those out. They're like staples where it had like a jute cord here. And I just went ahead and put a coat of uh, stain on it. It's not even, it's called color wash. Have y'all ever seen this before? Tattered Angels Color Wash Tint. Um, thank you all so much for sprinkling. I'm going to show you what you're going to win in just a minute. Um, color wash tint. This is a great stain. It is water-based and I can use it up here in my studio because it doesn't have an odor because it's water-based. It's soap and water cleanup. You can just, you can just sprinkle it on and wipe it with a rag. And that's what I got here. So I love this for just a quick project. Obviously these little bottles, I don't even remember how much this was, but I got this at Hobby Lobby. These little bottles aren't going to last long if you're doing great big projects, but for a little place, wherever you, you know, a little, little area that you just want to stain. That is a great product. I don't sell it. I'm just telling you about it. <laughs> okay. So we're going to, um, this is what you're going to win when you sprinkle and do that today. I've got an eight ounce art resin kit. I'm going to send out to one of you all. I'll probably pick within 24 hours from all the people that did this. Okay. So, uh, tell me you're doing that, but then also do it and I'll send this out to y'all. I'll, I'll be in touch to get, um, to get your address whenever I draw that name. Let me move this a little bit closer. So, you know, so it'll be right there. Okay. I started out in Canva. Have y'all ever used Canva? It's a great program just to do some mock-up lettering or whatever. This is the prayer that we say every night when we before we eat dinner. And I thought this would be an absolute perfect thing for Thanksgiving coming up. So I'm going to be taking this to the, um, the home where we spend our Thanksgiving dinner. Sean's my husband's aunt. So I'm going to make this today. We're going to letter and we're going to do some glass on it. And then we're going to resin the whole thing. And I have one hour. So we're going to move quickly. Since we're moving quickly, I went ahead and stained this board. And then I cheated using, I'm not as good a letterer as Christy. So I cheated using white transfer paper. Have y'all ever used white transfer paper? Um, I even have to write on there which side has like the waxy coating. It's like a wax, but you can wipe it off too. I don't know. I love this stuff. I used to paint murals and I would use this 
to transfer monograms and stuff like that on walls. So this is white transfer paper. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. You can get it online. Um, and then I printed out my prayer and transferred it. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me, let me lift it up. See, it's just barely on there. Hi, Trina. Hi, Kim. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, then I have a pretty good brush. This is uh, the Zen collection from Royal Lang Nickel. I'm telling you everything because people always ask, at least this way, it's on the video <laughs> if we need to. Okay, so this is a size three slash O and that tag drives me crazy, but we're gonna leave it on there. Then I have some acrylic paint and I'm going to hand letter this. Let's see if I can do it without making a mistake. Usually I'll misspell something. Christy knows all about that. Anybody that letters on stuff, if you haven't misspelled something, you need to go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> but if it's already on here, surely I won't misspell it. And I'm just adding water to my paint just to loosen it up a little bit so that it flows a little more freely. Um, and I may end up using a different brush. This one's okay. I like one that's a little bit longer. So I tried to find it before I got on here, but of course, you know. Oh my goodness. There it is. Well, let's see. Well, I'll start with this one and I'll see if I, if I like it. So I'm just using, and you want to use a paint. I would not get like an apple barrel paint or something like that. I would get, you've never seen white transfer paper. Listen, it's good stuff because if you have something dark, you know, there's no way to transfer the dark, the dark stuff on there. Now this probably would have worked because it's not real dark. It probably would have worked with the black graphite paper, but okay. I've emulsified that. I've almost whipped it because I want it to be smooth and free flowing. You got to prep everything. Nothing comes perfect right out of the bottle, right? Okay. So what I was saying is you probably don't want to use an apple barrel, apple barrel, or like a cheapy craft paint. You want something a little more robust. What did I use here? Um, this is the Artist Loft brand, but it's the, um, oh, it's the art acrylic, fine art acrylic instead of the cheaper, cheaper one. And I say that because we don't want to have to go over this a whole bunch of times. You don't want to have to go over and over and over. And I also, another trick, I like to keep this handy because there's something about this font that I really like. And I want to try to translate that into my painting. Um, so I'm trying to keep that smooth. I'll lower down a little bit so y'all can see exactly what I'm doing. Let me see. We got the corner of the phone holder in there. There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, that clear that white paper. I think I have it in my Amazon affiliate store. Um, I'll make sure it's in there by the end of the day, and I'll put a link in here to that as well on this video. Um, I think I have some. I think I put it in there because some, you know, Hobby Lobby sometimes is hit or miss with that kind of stuff. Our Michaels does not have it. I know that, but we have kind of a smaller Michaels store um, than most. This is not thin enough. Let me grab this other brush and see if I like it better. I think this is the brush I used when I did this in my group. So have you all been following along? Let me know if y'all have been following along with the Halloween bash. Um, because we came here from there. I want to know. We've had videos all week and they're, I think most of them are on my timeline. I'm going to make sure that they're all shared on there. They have been so much fun to watch everybody all dressed up and all um, making their projects. I love it so much. Hello, good morning, Julie and Linda and Glenda. Yeah, that white transfer paper is a godsend for sure. Um, I know Christy sometimes will use chalk and just rub the back of her piece with white chalk. And, you know, it would work the same way. The only thing I find is when I'm using... Um, paint over chalk. Um, when I'm using paint over chalk, sometimes the chalk will resist the paint. This does not do that. This particular whatever is on this product, I guess it's a wax. I really don't know. 
Um, I can't get situated here. It does not do that. It does not uh, repel the paint. You know what I'm talking about. If you've painted before, you know what I'm talking about. How it'll just almost sit on top of the chalk rather than um, let it touch whatever's underneath. So you've watched most of them. Oh, Beth, we're the first ones. Well, you picked a good day. <laughs> I'm going to say that anyway. But, you know, I like, I'm, uh, who was on yesterday? Lulu Bean Designs. She was saying she likes to lay in bed at night and watch other makers. And that's what I like to do. My husband falls asleep in 3.2 seconds and um, I don't. And so I lay in bed and I watch videos. And so that's kind of my guilty pleasure, I guess. It's probably why I don't go to sleep easily, but that's neither here nor there. We just have different sleep patterns. Um, I saw a meme one time that said, there are people who fall asleep before their head hits the pillow. And there are people that lie awake all night long and they marry each other. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. I don't lie awake all night. I don't have insomnia or anything, but it does take me a while to go to sleep. My brain just won't turn off. All right. We still doing okay on here. I'm check. I'm looking up every now and then I'm trying to move quickly because I know this part can be boring, but I also want you all to see that lettering with paint is really pretty easy if you already have um, a template. Now, this brush, I will tell you, this is a liner brush. I cannot see that. Zero, zero. Couldn't see the size. I gave you the details on the other one, but I love a good liner brush. It holds so much paint. The shorter ones, you're having to go back and dip your paint, dip in your paint so often. These just give you a better flow. You'll have to go back and binge watch. Me too. I'm going to have to go back to the beginning where Trina started us out and binge watch all of them. We have, you know, this is fourth quarter for, <laughs> and us makers have been so busy. I mean, it's fourth quarter for everybody, but <laughs> those of us that make stuff, and many of y'all do, I'm sure. This is just overwhelming time. It's it's the time of year when we order the most pizza, I think. <laughs> Luckily, I, my son cooks a lot, but we do order in a lot and go pick up a lot. Yes, us creatives do have a hard time turning our brains off. You're exactly right. And you know... Um, you get your best ideas when you're laying there at night and overthinking everything. <laughs> That's when you get your best ideas. All right. So I told you a little bit about my glass collage group. This is a project we did last month in there. And I share templates and paint colors and all kinds of projects. We have guest artists when, um, when I can secure them getting harder and harder to find guest artists. If any of you guys are artists and you want a guest in our group, you don't have to do glass. We have uh, guest makers of all kinds. Reach out to me and let me know and I will let you know some information about it. Um, you sleep with a notepad by your bed. I think Miss Tracy does that too. I don't do that. I should. I usually just put it in my phone under notes, but because I'm on my phone <laughs> but again, which is why I probably can't fall asleep very easily. Oh, it's terrible. Now I could fall asleep right this second up here sitting in this chair. But when I get in bed, that's when I can't fall asleep. It's crazy. My mom is here right now helping me pack my maker's kits. And um, she texted me from upstairs in my studio and she said, okay, what do you need me to do next? I said, I don't know. Hang on a minute. I'm getting dressed like a pirate, you know, as one does on a random Thursday morning in October. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy. We, um, we always used to dress up with our kids. So we have all kinds of costumes in our costume box. It's like a kid's costume box. 
I almost was Roz from Monsters, Inc., but I thought that was kind of niche, and you all may not know who I was, but we did that a couple of years ago. Oh, what is that? What that message was. All right, y'all, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. I'm doing okay on time, though. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about glass. Where people, one of the biggest things people always ask me is, where do you find glass? And um, for my projects, you know, and my number one source is word of mouth. When people find out that you're using stuff to make something else, they are always more than willing to drop stuff off at your house. So much so that you eventually have to say, I don't want any more. I'm good. Thank you. Um <laughs> But people are so generous with things that they no longer want, but they don't want to end, they don't want them to end up in a landfill. Um, recycling glass is very expensive and they don't do it in our in our town anymore um, because it is so expensive. And there are so few types of glass that actually can be recycled. So people think, oh, I'm going to recycle it. It really doesn't end up getting recycled most of the time. Um, and it can only be recycled so many times. It's like plastics. So being able to make something beautiful out of glass that would end up, you know, in the trash, in a landfill, whatever, is so, um, it's so nice. And being able to tell people, hey, I'm going to take, I'll take that stuff from your great aunt's cousin, that that those dishes or that glassware or your old uh, wine bottles or whatever, and I'm going to make something beautiful with it. People love to pass things like that along. They love to know that their stuff is going to get used. Um, so word of mouth is my number one. The second one is uh, charity sales. We have an orphanage here in town. They don't really, uh, they have mothers and children now, more so than just kids by themselves. But um they have a sale every Thursday. There are habitat restores all over the country. Um, of course, places like Goodwill, which I usually I usually don't go to Goodwill because I find that their stuff is really priced too high. Um, we want like yard sale prices, you know, because we're going to take it home and break it up. Um, Dollar Tree usually is a good. Now that's, you know, actually purchasing it new which sometimes if you need a certain color, you end up having to do that. Um, hi, Bonnie. Hi, Grace. Um, Linda, you still have your costume box? That's funny. Yep, me too. Um, so I get glass all over the place. But like I said, word of mouth is my number one. You know how it is when you tell somebody, hey, I'm looking for box tops or I'm looking for bottle caps or whatever it is. People come out of the woodwork. Same with the glass. They, you just have to tell people what you're doing. Just be bold. Be bold and say, hey, I'm starting a new art, hobby, craft, whatever. And, um, But I will tell you this, too. If, if the idea of nipping and cutting glass, like wine bottles and vases and cups and glasses and whatever, if that doesn't appeal to you, this piece right here is certainly something you could make without even using nippers to cut stuff. Nippers are, are the tool that I use to cut things. Um, and you're actually just squeezing it. You're not cutting it. Oh, you guys were almost finished. Let's see. See, I did that whole thing without having to dip back in the paint. That's the beauty of a liner brush. Well, that and among other things, too. But All right. So let's see. And don't uh, don't forget, you guys sprinkle and I'm going to send you an art resin kit straight from my studio. OK. All done. Okay, let me, um, now, let me tell you about how we're going to decorate this. I'll pull this up a little bit so you can see. Okay, 
I have some fake leaves. And if you're not good at drawing leaves or you don't want to trace them, you can go out in your yard and get real leaves or you can use um, you can use fake ones. Whatever you want to do. I'm going to get out some paint and mix some colors. This is uh, Deco Art Primary Red. And then this is the Master's Touch Acrylic Yellow Ochre. Put some on here. And I want some of this green. This is uh, Chrome Oxide Green, also Master's Touch Acrylic. And then I want some brown. We're doing all the fall colors here, which if you are a, a non-traditional fall color person, you might want to use blues and, and those kind of colors, okay? Don't feel like you have to use the colors that I'm using if you do this project. I'm gonna mix up kind of a orange color, with a little brown in it. Here we go, like a pumpkin color. And I'm taking this fat brush and I'm going to paint the backs of these leaves. I wonder if that's dry yet. I wanna be able to set stuff down on that. We'll see. I'm painting the back where the veining is so that we can get a little bit of the veining on that. This is just a silk leaf, okay? This is like a kid's project. And what, oh, wouldn't it be fun to involve your, if you had kids or grandkids, wouldn't it be fun to involve them in this? Okay, and I'm just gonna press this down. Let's see. Press it down. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. It's not going to be perfect. But you've got a little bit of a leaf design on there. Let's do it again. Is that dry? I think it is. Be terrible if I smeared it, though. We'd all be upset. Okay. So it'd be fun to use real leaves for this. We're just going to go around and we're using a lot of times when I do glass and resin art, I will use a lot of paint in the background and then do the glass on top of that because I think that that just brings it to the next level. It just gives it another dimension of texture and interest and all of that. So pressing this down just to make that leaf shape. I think using real leaves would probably be really great, but this is what I had up here. <laughs> so this is what I'm using. <laughs> but now you'd want them to be kind of soft because once they get um, once they get crunchy, they're not gonna they're gonna fall apart on you up here. Get the paint on them. All right, do one that's kind of red. Then I'm going to paint some too, just by myself. All right, these long pirate sleeves are going to be rough. I have this board sitting up on cups because you have to set your your work up on cups whenever you. Um, put resin on it. So I already put it up on there and that's why it's wobbly. I'll turn this around. This would be such a fun project to do even at Thanksgiving. If you prep the board ahead of time, you had a bunch of cousins, a bunch of kids and let them each do their leaf imprint on there. I think that would be a fun activity and then you'd have it for years to come. Yeah, it's upside down right now. <laughs> I'm just turning it around so I can get to all the corners without dragging my sleeves through it. I don't care about my sleeves. I just don't want to <laughs> drag stuff through it. Okay, I'll do one more right here, just the edge of it. Now I want to do one more right there. Sorry, 
you know, when you look at stuff, you think, okay, well, maybe it needs a little more. My husband started working from home and I ran in his office to get something dressed up like this. He just looked at me. <laughs> he has no idea what's going on up here today. <laughs> it's a pirate day. <laughs> Thank you, Leona. Thank you, Jessica. All right. I'm almost finished with this part. I just want to make sure that I get it um, kind of full. Okay. Now I'm going to set that aside. Let me get my paper towel. All right. I'm going to paint some, um, some branches on here too. Let me get some of this brown and white and that long brush, that liner brush. Brown and white, and lots of, you know what? That's not gonna work very well. Let me use this. I just need to smash that up, that brown. You know, a lot of times um, acrylic, artist acrylics are so thick, and when you mix them with your um, craft paints, like I'm doing here, a little bit, a little bit, then, you know, you you got to take your time with that. Okay. I'm just going to paint some branches on here because I want to add some berries. Just a few little branches. Great kids handprints. That would be, that would be, Emily, that's a great idea. In the fall colors. I love that, especially with the prayer. Um, this is a prayer that we have always said in my family. And, um, you know, you could do your own prayer that you've always said in your family. Or this one, whichever, whatever. Okay, don't forget to do this. Do this and you win art resin. Okay. All right, let me move this out of the way. We're going to move on to glass. I just wanted to get those branches on there because, 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 let me see, we're going to move on to glass. Now, like I said, if you do not want to cut glass, break glass with your, with nippers, if you don't want to buy nippers and break glass, you could always add things like this. This is just a mixed um, container of flat marbles and glass rocks from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever online, whatever you want to do, you could add little bits and baubles like this and never cut a piece of glass. You can absolutely do that. However, I love to cut glass. <laughs> so these are nippers. This is, um, these are called Greta nippers. These are my new nippers and I love them. I also have this kind. Let me grab them. I also have this kind. Um, that I've used for years and years and years, and they're all great. They're all good. This is a uh, votive holder from uh, Dollar Tree, and you know what? I'm going to stand up so that I can nip a little better. Sorry, you get to <laughs> you can see my arm on there. Um, I'm going to start at the edge and just kind of cut through this glass to get down to some that's a little bit thicker. Because this up here at the top is so thin um, because it's Dollar Tree glass. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll encounter wine glasses that are super thin too. I'm just going to nip some of these into some shapes that, um, whoop, sorry. I'm just going to, did I lose video there? I don't know. I'm just going to nip some of these into shapes that kind of look like leaves. I'll use this too, but it's for another project. Now, I love this glass because it, it, it has that iridescent quality. Can you even see that? It's almost like that old circus glass, car carnival glass. That's what it's called, carnival glass that maybe your grandmother had or something somebody had in your family or you've seen it maybe out at, if you've seen it at a at an antique store, <laughs> if you've seen it at an antique store, you probably want to grab it because it's good stuff. Okay, I'm just kind of laying those three pieces together like that. What will happen when I pour resin on it is you'll be able to see underneath it 
you'll be able to see the painting underneath it. And this is just another level of texture and color, okay? Thank you, Michelle. It is it is my favorite thing in the world to do. So um, I'm glad to introduce you to something new. I have um, maker's kits that give you kind of a little taste of what I do and what you can do. They have glass and resin. The glass in those is already cut up. You know what? I'm going to put this one up here because um, put that one up here. Here we go. Because I want to balance this out a little bit. And this one's already shaped like a leaf. Thank you, Kathy. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? Okay, so now I've got a couple of leaves here. You guys, I have some of these plates. Have you ever seen these anywhere with all this texture? I'm going to cut some of that up because I love, love, love the texture that you can get from this. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? All right. Some people can't stand that sound. Y'all, I love that sound. It's like crunching ice <laughs> or hard candy. Mm -mm, love it. Love that sound. Okay. I'm just going to pile these up just to give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of interest over here. I'll move. I save all of my scraps. And I've got quite a bit of glass right here, but I'll clean that up with a dry brush before I... I pour resin on it. These pirate sleeves are getting in, getting on my nerves. They're in my way. It's hard being a pirate. <laughs> oh, it's a therapeutic sound to you. I think it is too. Breaking glass is probably the most therapeutic thing I've ever done. <laughs> and that includes going to an actual therapist. <laughs> Therapeutic for sure. Oh, there goes my nippers. Hang on. I'm just trying to balance out the yellow, the, the paint, and the, um, let's see, my crazy outfit. I'm standing up because this is kind of hot up, and I'm, I, uh, ergonomically, this is easier for me. I'm a short, short person. Thank you, Candy. Thank you so much. Let's see. Just a few. This part gets a little bit thicker. See how thick that glass is? And while I could still nip it, I think it would be too thick for this. I don't want it, I don't want it that big on here. Or that thick, rather. Okay. So this, while glass collage might look a little bit like mosaic to you, it's not mosaic because stuff doesn't have to fit together. You just put stuff on here. It doesn't have to fit together to work. Okay, I've got this. It's kind of like a purple. Can you see that? Look how cool that is. I'm going to just put some of that over here just for kicks. Maybe a little bit over here. Maybe on that side. There we go. Now I've got paint on it because I didn't let my paint dry. Okay, let's find something else. Oh, I love this. So this came from an old church window. Um, a church was replacing their windows. And I know somebody who knows somebody. Actually, she's a friend of mine. And she said, hey, we're replacing our church windows. Um, do you want any of this glass? Well, what do you think I said? Absolutely. No, it's not hard to nip the glass. It is so easy. I mean, if the glass is super thick, um, you got to put a little more muscle behind it. But y'all, I have arthritis and carpal tunnel. So, and I can nip it. I don't have any trouble. So, I mean, obviously you've seen that. So no, it's not, 
it's not a big deal for me at all. So that's what I mean by telling people that you um, that you're making stuff with glass. They are word of mouth travels really fast. And so I use this glass to do crosses and all kinds of cool stuff. Because I feel like this is probably sacred glass, you know. It's been in the church for years. And it's heard prayers and hymns and all kinds of stuff through the years. What did you ask? Uh, let's see. So you bought that to break it. Why, yes, I did. Sandy asked me, do you have to worry about getting cut on the finished piece? Um, it's not something that you want to run your hand across. It's not something that you want to cuddle up in bed with. <laughs> but the thought of that cracks me up. But it's um, it's not going to, you know, it's not so sharp that you feel like, you know, you can't have it hanging on your wall. Does that make sense? Okay, so I take a dry brush. I'm not finished yet. I'm just going to get some of this big stuff out of the way. You don't want a whole lot of little chips laying around on your glass because it's going to detract from it. How much time do I have? Oh, I'm doing so good, y'all. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So, let's see. Let me just cut some pieces that are not going on top of, um, I usually would cut them off to the side, not on top of the artwork, but I'm doing that for this so that you all could see, okay? Um, let's see. I like this tortoiseshell glass. What's that called? Does anybody know what that's actually called? I've always called it tortoiseshell glass, but I know there's probably another name for it. Is it like dragon's eye or tiger's eye or something? I don't know. Let's see. I want these to look like leaves. And this one actually smells kind of good, even though I cleaned it after I got it. I think I think this bin had like a perfume bottle in it or something. So every time I open it up, it smells good. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Let's see. What else do we have? Oh, I've got some gold. This was just from a votive. And all of these things, because of their random shape and the way that I'm laying them on here, start to look like leaves. Oh, the next one doesn't come on till two. Oh, okay. All right. I thought she was right after me. Well, y'all might have to hang out with me till two o'clock. No, I won't do that to you. Um, thank you, Trina, for letting me know, though. Oh, look at that. Look at that piece. Isn't that cool? I find some of the coolest glass. And and it's odd because, you know, it just shows up. It's like it, um, I don't know. I mean, I do go looking for glass, but once you start looking for something, you know how you start seeing it all the time? It's kind of like um, when you get a white car, then you notice all the cars on the road are white. It's that kind of phenomenon. Once you start looking for something, then you see it. I'll round that off a little bit. So in my makers group, we do have a crash course glass collage basics uh, video. And then there are people in there with tons of experience to answer any questions you might have. Um, oh, we do have a class. You're right. <laughs> we do have a class after this at one. I forgot. In my group, we have a class at one. Okay. I'm going to start adding some beads to this. These aren't even beads. These are marbles that I spray painted, you guys. I just laid these out on a cookie sheet that I won't use for cookies and I hit them with a little bit of gold spray paint. So I want to, let me grab some glue. You can use Elmer's glue on your projects. 
I'm going to cluster these together. You can use a little bit of Elmer's glue on your project. You just have to make sure that it's dry before you pour resin on it. So let me sit back down. It's kind of hard to see when you're when you're looking at it this way, but you can't go any there anywhere without looking at glass. I know me too. It's so easy to become a hoarder. I agree with you. It is so easy. A little too easy. You can ask my husband about that. But as long as you sort it, you know, I mean, I do save all my little scraps and whatnot, but. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Beverly. Thank you, Leisha. Leisha, Lesha, Leisha, pass more. Oh, you know what? That is a common name around here. Are you from Kentucky? I know some past mores. My best friend's cousin is a past more. <laughs> We're all glass addicts. Isn't that the truth? Woo! We really are. Okay. Let's see. What else do I want to add to this? Oh, 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 I've got this. Again, glass that I have hit with uh, gold spray paint. I love gold and I think, um, actually I'm gonna come through here and do some gold stuff before I finish that. Let me grab my gold paint pen. I love gold, especially with these fall colors. So this is the Deco Color Premium Paint Pen. I have this in my Amazon store. You guys, this is my very, very favorite thing. And I'm gonna do some branches with leaves like this. like just a doodle branch. You heard me the other night on my live, I talked about gilding the lily. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. Hi, Marcy. How are you today? Yes, we are. Thank you so much. You're from Oklahoma. Well, isn't that something? We have a lot of passmores here in Kentucky. Where are you all from? If you tell me where you're from, because I want to know. Um, my family and I love to travel and we just might show up at your doorstep. I'm just kidding. I won't do that. Well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I will. Okay. Hot Springs, Arkansas, Missouri, New Jersey. Ooh, I've got something to send to New Jersey. That big piece over there I'm working on. I have to ship to New Jersey. Um, it's been in my Instagram stories for a few days. It's of Croatia. Okay. So, you know, you can decorate however, I'm just dotting on here with some gold. You can decorate however you want. Michigan or, oh, I'm ready for some fall color. We just barely have our fall color. I think our um, leaves are just waiting until later to change, which is fine with me because I like to have a little bit of color for Thanksgiving. Usually it's all gone by then. All right, I'm just polka dotting. Do y'all do that? Just, okay. All right. Turn it around. I might have just turned it completely 360 degrees. I don't know. Okay. You want to go on that trip? <laughs> Me too. To Croatia. Is that the one you're talking about? Y'all, I got to 
get this underneath here, right? Okay. Woo, woo, woo. All right. Now, let me sprinkle some more of this on here now that I've done. I like the gold. Thank you so much, Annette. Thank you. I'm going to sprinkle some of this little gold. Uh, this is crushed glass that I get at Michael's. And this stuff, I love it. I love it. Um, you can color it all different colors, which I do. Mostly, I, I get it, I do it, make it green for trees and whatnot. But um, I just love using this stuff on everything. Okay, do we feel like it's ready for resin? I believe that it is. I believe so. Okay. Um, and I say, okay, a lot. Sorry about that. Let's get it straight on here. I feel like it's not very balanced on these. There we go. Okay. So the number one rule you want to make sure, or one of the rules, there are a lot of rules, not a ton, but you want to make sure that, um, your piece is elevated. Let me get all the crud off the center here. You want to make sure that your artwork is elevated and that, so that the resin can drip down to the bottom underneath. And you want to make sure that um, you've covered your workspace with plastic because it will um, drain off and you just don't want to have a big mess on your hands. Let me move it this way a little bit. There we go. Okay. Do, 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 do. I'm going to put on gloves. I should probably change my shirt because of these sleeves. Look at these long. Look, they're like 14 inches long. It's okay. It's okay. Um, put on gloves. You want to make sure you leave this somewhere that it can dry for about 12 hours. It'll be cured after 24 hours. Hard as a rock. If the room temperature is like normal temperature, like 70 to 72 degrees. And if you have um, good normal humidity. If it's more than that, it just takes a little, little longer to cure. I have two parts of my resin, which this is the same amount that is going to come in this kit that I'm giving away if you do this. Okay. I'm going to pick a winner in 24 hours so that people can have time to watch the replay. Um, so this is part one and part two. One part is a hardener and the other part is resin. And... Just gonna get every bit of that out of there. And resin um, is like liquid gold. It's kind of pricey. Of course, the larger quantity you buy, the cheaper it is, but it just takes your artwork to the next level. It will take something that's just so-so eh, like this and make it into something really magnificent. Okay, when you stir it, you wanna stir it nice and slow. You don't wanna whip it. Alexa, set a timer for three minutes. I'm sorry if I just set off your all's robots. Yes, Dollar Tree plastic tablecloths are great. Absolutely. Yes, they are. And um, actually, on my big work tables, I have a plastic tarp. And I can use it over and over and over again and peel the resin up. Um, so the resin just peels right off once it's cured. And it'll do that on a plastic tablecloth for a little while. <laughs> then it'll eventually wear down and... You know, you won't be able to do that anymore. Um, but if you're just doing a few projects, a uh, plastic tablecloth is perfect. When I used to do workshops, I would even get a big roll of plastic from Sam's Club and use that. So thank you all. Thank you all for sprinkling. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, everybody. Um, if you have ever used resin before, let me know. I want to know if how many of you all have used resin. I know a lot of y'all watching today are in my group, so I know you all have, but um, you love to peel the resin off your tarp. I do too. It's like peeling a sunburn. Can't tell if it's a bad thing, but we grew up in the age of sunburns, didn't we? No, you've never used resin before, Pat? Okay. Interesting. Good. Carol has. Okay. I just like to know how many people, you know, if this is a common thing or if this is something, you know, you've never seen before, or never used before. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Amy. You've never used it. Annette's never used it. All right. 
Kathy hasn't, Connie hasn't. You guys need to get your feet wet or sticky. You need to get your feet sticky. <laughs> You're too chicken, Sandy. Oh, don't be chicken. Okay, Debbie. Listen, Debbie and Sandy, you've got this stuff. You want to do it, but you're chicken. Okay, don't be chicken. Look, I'm making it so easy. Gloves and your stir stick. It's so easy. If you are scared, the packets that come in my maker's kits are really easy to use. They're like a two-part and you just pull the clip out of the center and mix it in a bag. And then... um You've never seen or used it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, back in the 60s and 70s. Absolutely. This resin has no odor. Um, it, it has a mild odor, but it has no VOCs. So um, it has no VOCs and it doesn't yellow, which is really a great thing. So um, this is a little bit different than the product from the 60s and 70s, but um, <laughs> it is easy, isn't it, Linda? Yeah, Beverly, you got to do it. Jump past your fear. Absolutely. You just need a little bit of courage. But like I said, those maker's kits are a great way to get your feet wet slash sticky with resin because they, um, they're just in a packet. Mm -hmm. Alexa, stop. They're just in a packet and you can drizzle with the packet and it's so easy. Okay, let's do it. So we've mixed for three minutes. Listen, y'all have been doing this for seven years. I still always, always set a timer, even though I know in my brain how long three minutes is, you need to set a timer. Yeah, Marcy, you tell them, <laughs> you tell them, and you want to make sure that you're scraping your sides and that you're digging up from the bottom. You want to mix this as thoroughly as possible. And I always mix a little beyond three minutes just to be sure, because there's nothing worse than having resin that didn't properly um, do that chemical reaction to make it work. Okay. And then I'm just going to drizzle. You see how I'm taking my stick and just moving it back and forth to drizzle the resin on. And it's going to drip off of this piece onto the tablecloth below. But I want to make sure I cover all of my glass first, like the part that's sticking up. I want to get that part done first. Everything that's sticking up because it's like corn syrup and it's going to drain down and hit the board below and seek its own level, just like corn syrup does. If you've ever spilled corn syrup in your cabinet, you know exactly what this is like. It's going to it's going to go down between everything and make everything stick. And then it sets up as hard as glass. How many times do I reuse my plastic measuring cup? These, this one, I don't reuse it. The ones that I buy from like the Dollar Tree um, until I can't get the resin out of it anymore because I just let the resin sit in it and then peel it out. So it just depends. Sometimes, sometimes it's four or five times. Sometimes if I have to add glitter to my resin or something crazy, it's just once or twice, you know. So it just kind of depends. But these are one-time use. They're, they're super thin, these graduated ones. I do not reuse these. Do I have any videos to show how to do keepsakes, jewelry, awards, etc.? I do for jewelry um, and flowers from like a funeral, like dried flowers from a funeral or a wedding or prom or something like that. Um, you can embed anything that's not wet in resin. So anything that's not wet. So those videos are in my maker's membership group. It's um, $29 a month and you get a video every week with a difference. Sometimes you get two a week. <laughs> this week we're doing two um, with all kinds of stuff. Some projects are more complicated. Some are more simple. We have people of all skill levels. We have people that um, have never made anything creative in their life in there. And we have people that are seasoned sellers on Etsy and, and trade shows and that kind of thing, vendor events. So there's all skill levels and we all learn from each other. It's so much fun. Um, but there's a library of, what, 95 videos in there? 
maybe. How many ounces? That, okay, wait, wait. Oh, I haven't looked at this. How do you smooth out the strains going across the words? This will all level out just like corn syrup would. It seeks its own level. I am going to make sure I cover it all. And I could just pour it on there and use this. If there's no glass on it, you can use a stick or your gloved finger to move it around. Um, this is eight ounces of resin right here. Yes, thank you. Does the resin leave runs like what on the words? It dries flat. It's going to level out and dry flat. Thank you. Thank you. This, I used four ounces of each part, and I'm going to have some left over. So I'm going to show you. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Right now, I'm finishing up uh, putting together my maker's kits, and I'm making my own resin stars to put in there for one of the kits. So let me grab, um, actually, can you grab that for me? Mm -hmm. My mom is here helping me assemble kits. They're shipping next week. So um, we got to have them all ready to go. Okay, so that's just enough left for me to show you. Um, I know that gold marker, isn't it wonderful? Oh, and can I have that torch too, please? Mm -hmm. Man, it's helpful having a helper here usually appear by myself. Just want to make sure that everything is thoroughly covered. Large elf. Thank you. Okay. This is how you get rid of the bubbles. This is just a uh, butane torch. <laughs> Everybody says, hi, mom. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Marcy. What size is this round? You know what, Trina? I haven't answered that. Hold on. So you want to, if you're going to pop the bubbles, you got to just keep the torch moving like this. And they're all going to pop. And then you just let it be. Let me see what size this is, Trina. Um, this is 14 inches. It's a 14 inch round. Okay, I'm gonna go over here and show you guys what I'm gonna do with this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So this is just a silicone mold from, oh yeah, thanks. This is just a silicone mold from uh, Hobby Lobby or Michael's, whatever, Amazon, whatever, just for candy, right? Oh, can you give me one of those Christmas trees too? Um, this is just for candy and it has the shiny on the inside. And so I've got this much resin left over. And like I said, resin is liquid gold. So we don't want to, <laughs> thank you, Angela. My mom is the best, I agree. Um, yes. <laughs> Totally addictive. You're right. Um, so I have this much resin left over and I don't want to waste it. And I'm putting together these kits if you saw my live the other night. So I'm going to um, make some more of these stars right here with my leftover resin. And I include these in the kits and then they can use that star for the top. I also make some balls too, but right now I'm just going to do these stars. I'll show you how I do that. This is, this is a bonus tip. Move my laptop out of the way. Here you go. So you would have enough to do stars and a 14 inch board if you win that eight ounce resin kit. So it's eight ounces total. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle some glitter in here. I don't know how much, just some. Okay, sprinkle some glitter in here. Oh, I was, that was out of the camera, I'm sorry. There you go. I added glitter to that leftover resin that's in there. And I'm just going to stir it up just so that it gets all mixed in. And then I'm going to pour it into these molds here. The thing with molds is you do want to make sure that your um, table is pretty level because if you don't, your molds are going to be wonky. Now for what I, for these stars, it doesn't really matter that much, but like if you're doing something, um, thank you, Linda. Yes. I will put a picture of the finished board and I'm going to give you guys that printable too, that I just made on Canva. If you want to make your own, because it's so easy to transfer. Um, like I said, you could use the chalk on the back if that method doesn't bother you. I just have a hard time getting my paintbrush to stick. Now, a paint pen might be different. I don't know. So I'm just putting a little bit in each of these so that I don't waste any of my resin. Let's see. Pull it this way. Y'all see what I'm doing there? I think I just got resin on my phone. Listen, everything in my life has resin on it because I'm a sloppy, sloppy resiner. 
I'm a messy maker. I don't know how these people have clean studios. Mine's always a disaster. My poor engineering husband, he doesn't even know what to do with me. He'll come up and clean it every now and then for me. <laughs> Get everything organized again. And then I make a mess of it again. It's just kind of a cycle. It's a dance we do. If you have somebody organized in your life, you know what? Give them a hug. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm a disaster. You get, you often get yours poured in your mold too thick. Yeah, I'm looking at this. This one is actually too thick. I could move some of that over to this one because art resin is not a resin that likes to be thick. It does better if it's in a thinner pour. And all of that is on Art Resin's website, like all of that information. But once you play around with it, you kind of um, get used to the way it works and you know what you know what's going to work and what isn't. So there we go. I'm going to set this where it's a little bit flatter. It's sitting on some glass there. Is this the same type of resin that people use to make the tumbler cups? Yeah, you can use art resin to make tumbler cups. There are so many different resins out there on the market. The reason why I like art resin um, is made by artists for artists. It was it was one of the first ones like that. And it does have no VOCs. And I have asthma, so I have to be really careful about what I'm inhaling and that kind of stuff. So this, you know, is really safe for me. Okay, let's see. Put this back over there. Oh, I wish it wasn't reflecting that light. That's just my ring light. You all know that, right? It's not, there's nothing, there's not a circle on there. <laughs> it's just my ring light. Okay, let's see. All right, so don't forget to sprinkle to win the eight ounce art resin kit. And um, I will, yeah, Sean really is the best. <laughs> I appreciate him so much. Oh, Kelly, thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is my Thursday morning look. You know, I think I'll still be dressed like this for my membership group uh, at two o'clock. All right. Or one o'clock. I think it's a wine, isn't it? All right. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Okay. Who's next? I think Jen's Den Art is next. And I'm going to put a link on here so that you all can find her. Let me tag her move this around so I don't drag my arm through resin. Oh, let's see. I'm just going to type it because I can't tag. I don't know how to do that. Um, Gloria, this is sprinkling. That word right there is sprinkling. <laughs> All right. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. I don't think you know how much I appreciate you. So Jen's Den Art is next. And Trina says she's at two o'clock. I thought she was at one. Um, but that's where you'll find her is at Jen's Den Art. All right. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. And um, if you decide to try art resin, let me know. Send me a message. I want to know if I've created any addicts today. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Bye.